It's a larger question. Uh, Quran or Islam prohibits several things. Um, and you could stick a why to any one of those. Why do Muslims slaughter their animals the way they do? Why are they not allowed to eat pork? Why can't they consume interest or any form of you know, uh, uh, inappropriate growth in wealth, etc.? You could stick a why to any law. The larger answer of that is, if, you're, if someone is convinced that this is revelation from God, then whatever God has to say, you don't need the answer why ans the, the, you don't need the answer to why to be doing it the bigger question the bigger why is why should i believe this is revelation when that why is answered then all of these why's disappear now it's futile for a muslim to sit with somebody and say let me tell you why we don't drink alcohol because you know look at friday night what happens after people go clubbing look at how many people die in car accidents look at the abuse that happens because of alcohol look at its you know health uh, you know harms etc cetera, etc cetera. These are not the reasons Muslims don't drink alcohol. Even if none of these problems were not there, we would still not drink alcohol. And what would our reason be? God said no. Then the real question to ask isn't, why don't you drink alcohol? The reason is, the real question to ask is, why do you believe this is from God? Why do you believe that the Quran is from God, and it's the absolute word of God? What convinces you of that? That's the fundamental question. And that's, I, I'd urge our audience and even people who represent Islam to think like this. Sometimes when peop, we, people are asked microscopic questions about our faith. We're asked, why do you pray in the evening? Why do you pray five times? You know, why do you give 2.5% not 2.6% mandatory charity? Why not? You know, why, why do you pray three, three units of prayer, three rakahs in prayer in the evening prayer and four in the, in, later on? What's the logic behind that? Why do you guys go to the pilgrimage in Mecca? Why do you pray in that direction? All of those whys disappear if you answer the fundamental why. Why do you believe Islam is the truth? These are all, it's like saying you're asking about the roots or, or the, the branches, but you should be asking about the root from which these branches came. Right? right? That's, that's essentially our, our response. Okay? okay? What? So then why do we believe in the Quran? Why do we, I'm sorry. So then why do we believe Islam is the truth? That's the question, see? That's the real question. Why do I believe Islam is the truth? Why do you believe, is, believe Islam is the truth? Fundamentally, this religion connects you or, or, or answers the question that you and I have had inside our conscience. We were created, our creed is we were created with an innate, pre-programmed goodness inside of us. A goodness that wants to be grateful when good things have come our way. A, 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 a conscience that says, that refuses to accept that we were created without a purpose. And we're seeking the answer to that purpose. What is that purpose? How do you thank someone who created you? And the Quran comes along and essentially does a few things. One, it introduces you to someone who has no flaw. Who is worthy of all praise and gratitude. Who has no one in between you and him. There's no intermediary between you and him. You know, many religions are marked by someone who will take you, connect you to God. There will be someone in between that will, make, that will take the hits for you and you don't have to basically be answerable to God you just have to be answerable to someone in the middle and they can take care of business for you what does Islam do? Islam tells me I will be talking or answering to God myself and by the way when I should ask God I should ask Him directly I should ask Him, He's close enough to me Quran says uh, We're closer to you than your jugular vein in other words God listens to my prayers directly, immediately right? This is from a moral point of view. From a moral point of view, I was looking for direction and Islam offers me the most clear, direct you know, access to God Himself without an intermediary. The other thing that religions have to offer is some kind of uh, uh, you know, uh, hierarchy. There are people that are higher up in faith and you have to go through them to be connected to God. You know, there's a kind of a clergy. And without that clergy, you can, and you cannot question that clergy because they're perfect and they're flawless and they're sin-free. No such thing in Islam. The only people that God protected their innocence of are the prophets themselves, all of them. After that, all of us are open to mistakes. So our role models came, become those who came before us, not those who live now, because those who live now can fall into corruption at any time. Then particularly, this, this is again from a moral point of view. Now let's combine that with the intellectual side of things. Somebody says, why do you believe it's the word of God? It could be the, some 
you know, somebody just wrote this in the middle of a desert and made up this story and it became popular. People say that all the time. It became popular, you know. What makes me convinced that this is me personally, what is, makes me convinced it's the Word of God? My, I, I mean, I've short, shared my own story before. Right. When I was in college, I took a bunch of philosophy courses and I lost my faith. I, I refused to believe in Islam for some time. And it is after I refused to believe in Islam and I had become essentially a skeptic that I heard the entire Qur'an explained cover to cover with the teacher. And I, I didn't go in listening from a, uh, from a believer's point of view. I had a bunch of questions and I wanted them answered. That's all I wanted. And I was confident going in, I'm not going to get the answers I'm looking for. And to my surprise, my, answer, my, my questions start, started getting knocked out of the park one after the other, after the other, after the other. I was literally brought on my knees by this book. I was humbled. I had to give up. This has to be divine. After that, I started learning the Arabic language only because I was curious about it. You know, now that I, I've, its arguments have appealed to me with the help of someone who's a, a good teacher and was willing to take my obnoxious questions and answer them, right? So that's why I'd, I'm not offended by questions because I was the same way, you know? After that, I said, you know what? I want to read this for myself. So I started learning Arabic. And I started studying the Qur'an so that I could not have a filter of translation between it and myself. And the more I studied it, Every time I discovered something new, it was like I was becoming Muslim all over again. Like, this can't be human. There is no way. Not just purely from a philosophical, logical, rational, black and white kind of point of view. But your inner conscience just starts screaming, this can only be God's word. It can only be. And it's the intellectual arguments, the nuances, the language of it, the beauty of it, the historical integrity of it. All of that just multiplies on top of what your conscience is already wanting to say. It's a combination of those things. And I, I make that point very, very clearly, or hope I make it very clearly, because there are people who only want logical arguments. But in their conscience, they don't want to be grateful to a creator. They will die making logical arguments and never find their creator. They won't find him. Because human beings aren't purely rational. Yes, there's a rational component in our faith, and it must be satisfied but that we are not driven towards guidance unless a conscience inside of us says, I need to find purpose in my life. If, that's not the, if that has died inside someone, no amount of philosophical argument can bring them back. No, none, none of it. I felt like this word, this revelation, when I approached it sincerely, not only was my conscience weak and it made it strong, I felt that way. I felt my conscience itself getting stronger, but I felt the confidence in faith getting stronger and stronger as I studied more and more and more of it. And I spend my time teaching the Arabic language, helping other students appreciate the beauty of this language, not to prove to them it's God's word, actually so that I could see the bulb go off on their head on their own. And I could see the look on someone's face when they figure out what this one ayah means or this one statement means, and they go, whoa, that's divine. I don't have to tell them that. I get joy out of them seeing that for themselves. You know, I don't want it to be a debate. I don't. Just let your conscience be the judge. That's what I say. It's an invitation. It's an invitation. God didn't tell the Prophet to argue. God just said, recite these words to them. And if they have any goodness in them and they give it a fair shot, I'll take care of the rest. That's what the Qur'an did for me. That's what I hope it does for all of humanity. And that's the job of Muslims. To try to share the Qur'an in a way that it jogs our conscience and it jogs the conscience of all of humanity.